Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Baird ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. Basketball star John McLaughlin spent his last eight seasons playing for the Milwaukee Bucks. He was on the All-Star team in 1969 and on the Bucks team that won the NBA title in 1971. After retiring in 1976, he became the television color analyst for the team. Johnny Mack scored over 9,000 points in his career, and his number 14 jersey was retired by the Bucks. In this podcast, you'll hear John talking about that upcoming championship series with the Baltimore Bullets. And I was always curious about the playoffs going seven games. I know it's not nice to think there's a collusion in sports, but John discusses that subject. And John will talk about something that really upset him during the 1971 season. If you want to read more about that magical season, check out the book From Coin Toss to Championship by Rick Schabowski. And it's uh, just about 12 hours away. John, are you a little excited? Well, uh, you know, when you get to this stage of the game, you have to be excited because uh, you're going for the championship. And uh, I'd say we're definitely prepared and uh, we, we're ready for it. Were you a little bit shocked that uh, Baltimore won instead of New York? Well, uh, yeah, I, I would say shocked, I presume. I think everyone just naturally assumed New York and you didn't really even think any other way. But uh, when the game was over... Uh, I kept trying to realize it was Baltimore, and uh, believe me, uh, they proved they're the better club. Well, I think at the beginning of the season, uh, when we talked, we said uh, automatically, or I said automatically, I felt it was going to be New York and Milwaukee with uh, you know, no problem at well, all. Well, that's what everyone's been saying all year. <laughs> right. Well, how are you going to uh, handle Baltimore? Well, uh, with a lot of difficulty, I would presume. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're a great club, and uh, they're strong on the boards. They've got shooters. They can run. They can do everything. Uh, uh, they're a great basketball team. We're going to have our hands full. I, I think if we play our game, we ought to beat them. No question about it. Uh, we'll try to play them uh, even up on defense and try to make them play our game. And uh, we hope they continue to slow it down like they did in the New York series, although uh, I doubt very much if they will. Uh, John, all of our starters in the bench in good shape? Everybody? Yes, uh, Oscar's had a little difficulty with a groin injury, and uh, but uh, I don't think he's having any just problem with it as far as when we play. And Everyone's in, in good shape at this time, yes. You know, speaking of uh, Oscar and, uh, and of course, uh, Lou, and then uh, we saw a lot of uh, Will Chamberlain, uh, these are the guys that seem to get all the glory, but uh, I think one of the most colorful players in the NBA is uh, John McLaughlin. And uh, that uh, long, uh, arching shot you have and the 19 points you picked up uh, with those shots uh, the other day really uh, prove that uh, I, I think your basketball players like you are the ones that are the most fun to watch, really. Well, thank you very much, and, you know, I appreciate that, and, and, and uh, of course, it takes the great players, but I, I think uh, we've proven, and the Celtics have proved it, the Knicks have proved it last year, that it takes a team to win, to win anything big, and uh, uh, we've proved it this year, and, and uh, everyone that counts is aware of that, and, uh, and uh, uh, I, but I do appreciate you, your feelings on that very much. John, to be able to take uh, long shots like you do and just swish them through, uh, does it take hours and hours and hours of uh, years of practice to, to do something like this, or do you, do you find the range uh, automatically? Well, uh, that's difficult to answer. You know, I was a center in high school, and I was partially a center in college, and I never really shot those long shots that much at, at the early ages, and uh, very frankly, it's not something that I've worked on. It's just something that seemed like I woke up and suddenly it was there, uh, uh, and I was shooting a long shot. I, I, I really don't know, but... Uh, it, to become a good in anything, and especially in something like basketball, uh, for young people, it takes a lot of work. I think you have to have the ability, but you have to do something with that ability, and you're not going to do it by uh, sitting in the shade in the summertime and sipping lemonade. you got to get out and you got to play, and uh, that's what we try to tell these kids at, at these uh, Milwaukee Bucks basketball camps. And, uh, uh, I think it's very obvious that they have to work. There's sure a lot of kids playing ball. Have you uh, noticed the hoops up on the garages? <laughs> around the area. Yes, I have. Uh, I think there's been quite a few of them go up in the last three years. That's right. Uh, since we've come here, and I, I think that's a great thing. Uh, the other uh, afternoon, Sunday afternoon, uh, I noticed you committed a foul, and you started uh, laughing. Uh, what, what was that all about? Uh, Bob, I don't recall it right offhand. You, you sort of, uh, I don't know, you clapped your hands together, and uh, well, maybe, maybe it was, uh, you felt that it wasn't fair. Uh, well, that was probably it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it seemed like uh, I, that you sort of, that you agreed. 
<laughs> with the foul and you were caught. <laughs> well, it, it could have been that, but I was probably laughing because uh, I didn't think, I thought it was a ridiculous call, but, but uh, you know, that was just my opinion. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's an emotional game and you get carried away a little bit. You know, people often wonder about uh, the, the games that go, uh, the, the playoffs that go seven games, uh, like the, the Baltimore-New York thing. Do you guys get paid by the, the game, or do you just get paid so much for winning the playoff and so much for losing? Well, uh, we definitely don't get paid by the game, because if we could end it four, we would end it four, believe me. Uh, we, there's just so much money in the playoff pool, and you play for that. So uh, as far as the people think it's fixed or anything like that, there's no way. And uh, Because when you as a player go on the floor, uh, you know, you're trying to do your best, and you want to win, and you want to win as easily and as quickly as possible. So uh, uh, that's definitely uh, no factor at all as far as uh, how many games. Uh, how do the players feel about our arena situation? You know, it seems to be one thing after another. It's knocking you uh, off your home court. Now, right. Like, uh, this Thursday, it'll be the uh, the rodeo. Yes. Uh, and you could uh, leave here uh, with a 2-0 and record, which would be fantastic uh, going into Baltimore. Right. And uh, now, uh, of course, uh, only uh, one victory. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, the players, of course, you know, this, this is something that, we, that we've discussed and, and we all think about it. And, and I'm not trying to offend any Milwaukeeans, but I find it pretty upsetting. Uh, uh, they say, go win an NBA championship, fellas, but uh, go to Madison to do it, go to Oshkosh or wherever you have to go to do it. And I don't feel we're getting much help. And uh, I personally uh, don't appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'm out there trying to do my best, so I'd like to have a little help or as much help as possible. And believe me, the home court advantage is a great help. Right. And not only that, because of the arena problems, we, we have to play two or three weeks longer than we normally would. Not just Milwaukee's arena problem, but all over, you know. And uh, this gets to be kind of a pain in the neck and to the player because, uh, uh, you know, we're trying to do our best and, and, and play, and you have to play under some unbelievable circumstances sometimes. John McLaughlin, thank you very much. Let's uh, demolish uh, the bullets now. Huh? Well, thank you, Bob. Bob Barry. Thank you for listening to Bob Barry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Barry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.